Hi, this is Sandy Monroe. I'd like to welcome to our new uh, website, Monroe Live. Um, you're going to be seeing quite a bit of uh, new stuff. Hey there, boys and girls. Uh, well, it's been uh, kind of a wild ride here, looking at the Tesla Model Y. Um, and uh, right now what we're going to do is we're going to talk to you about what we think are the 10 top takeaways associated with this vehicle. Um, like I said, it has been a wild ride, but uh, the conclusions that I've come up with, we've come up with here at Monroe & Associates are basically that this is, um, this is identical to what Dr. Deming used to talk about. I mentioned Dr. Deming a couple of times. Um, he was a very good friend and a, absolutely one of my best teachers. And he used to talk about continuous improvement. And this car, I think, represents continuous improvement, not continual improvement. Continual improvement is what we see with most uh, manufacturers. They stop and uh, in, make improvements uh, in one big batch. Then they limp along or do whatever they do and collect other improvements and when they feel the time is appropriate they implement uh, in batches. This car and the Model 3 show us that that's not the, that's not the strategy that Tesla has. They have true continuous improvements. So what they do is they spot something that's wrong, they fix it immediately, they stick it in as a running change and continue going. It's continuous. Some of the stuff is major, some of it's minor, but at the end of the day, these guys, these guys here are doing something that's a step change beyond everyone else. And this car should be a wake up call for anyone who's manufacturing anything, regardless of whether it's a cell phone or a car or an airplane or anything else in the marketplace. The continuous improvement that Dr. Deming talked about and focused on, which was on the factory floor, to make improvements every day in every way, this has been now applied to the product design uh, venue and we better take note because this is the new way of doing business. With that, what I'd like to do is start on what we feel are the top 10 and I'm going to Start in no particular order, uh, but we're going to start with the, uh, the mega casting here. The mega casting um, represents a significant jump in innovation when it comes to body structure. We've seen many other OEMs use smaller cast nodes throughout their vehicles, specifically in the rear quarter and front shock towers, but nothing of this scale. This spans the full width of the body. Tesla's talked about combining the two existing castings into one and potentially even incorporating more, more than one into the uh, forward body structure and that single casting will be uh, definitely a game changer. There are definite advantages uh, to be had in pursuing this but it's definitely in chartered territory when it comes to the tooling, complexity costs and the physics associated with executing this. The one thing that I will tell you is that they probably are going to be successful and the reason is, is because they are creating their own aluminum. They're creating new material science that no one else is. And so that's consequently why they can make these things happen. Let's go on to the next one. Well, everybody knows that I was uh, fairly critical of the Model 3 body. I, there was many, many things that I, I really, really didn't care about um, or care for, I should say. And this, this, um, uh, this body doesn't represent what I would classify as best in class. But this one, this is the body of the Model Y. And we were specifically looking at things on the other one like uh, sloppy welds, unnecessary high panel counts, too many fasteners. But we're seeing lessons learned on the Model Y put into practice with notable improvements in weld consistency and spacing. And we loved seeing the switch to the uh, composite tub in lieu of the 100 plus pieces of stamped assembly. We did find some splash welds 
on the inboard side of the sills and the underbody, as well as a few questionable wells on the shotgun and the shock towers. But in aggregate, the body in white was a substantial improvement over the Model 3. So uh, Axel Rose said, um, every rose has its thorn. And unfortunately, uh, the thorn here for us on the Model Y is that um, it's, it exhibits some significant issues with fit and finish. The paint has evidence of dirt, orange peel, and runs. We noticed some particularly asymmetrical features, especially on the, on the tail lamps and lift gate. Beneath the surface, we liked a lot of the structural elements that uh, define the safety and functionality of the vehicle. On the A surface, we're still not seeing the type of quality that we'd expect from a, a seventy dollars or $80,000 vehicle. Although we did feel that the vehicle was a vast improvement over the Model 3, the fit and finish um, really needs to be still addressed. And again, we've made recommendations several times about people who can help out with fit and finish and, um, and uh, in areas where they can, uh, they can get consulting work from different people that can help them with these gaps, but they need to move on beyond where they are now. Well, this is an area that I was really, really excited about. There was a tremendous amount of buzz associated with the wiring, but uh, unfortunately, um, we didn't get the chance to see the kinds of things that we, we were hoping for. Um, we were s sort of interested in um, how we were gonna see this next gen of wiring. Um, Tesla has a few patents out there describing this, but when we got behind the panels, we found the wiring Although it's relatively efficient in terms of bundle size and packaging, it was still conventional in nature. Um, definitely not the big reduction that we were looking at. So going from um, one and a half kilometers down to seven, 700 meters, I, I was really, really interested in seeing what was gonna be happening there. But unfortunately, it's still pretty much the same. Nice job, but um, not revolutionary. So one of the things that I'm very, very excited about is the, uh, the heat pump. The addition of the heat pump to me was, um, was um, a very efficient use of power cons consideration when you're in the world of EVs. Um, the less power you use uh, for accessories means more range. Although um, many might not realize that the, the HVAC system draws a significant amount of power. And in pursuing a heat pump system, Tesla sought to eliminate high voltage movement that previously had when, the, when they had the uh, PTC heater in the cabin. While Tesla is not the first OEM to use a heat pump, um, actually the EV, the, the, the LEAF uh, used it, they definitely took, uh, took the idea to new heights in their version of the system. We were impressed with a super bottle system we saw in the Model 3, which was, uh, that played an integral role in thermal management of the 3, but the latest iteration with the octo valve and the heat pump definitely represents a step forward in terms of innovation and integration. This is the way everybody should probably be looking at um, uh, heating and cooling inside their vehicles. Well, we're gonna talk a little bit about the uh, high voltage battery. Um, this one over here, the uh, blue one is uh, the Tesla Model Y, and over here the green one is the Tesla Model 3. Now before I go into my little dissertation on these, I will tell you that <clears throat> we've discovered that perhaps uh, we're going to have to go into a deeper dive on the cells. In the videos before I said that, um, I said that we figured they were the same, but when I first looked at it I said just this looks different. And in fact, uh, that little bit of difference I saw before may be an indicator of something else. We think that the chemistry here is a little different, which makes the cell a little bit cheaper. Um, and that's, uh, that'll be information that'll come down the pike later on. But with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about the Tesla high voltage battery. As we began to dig into some of the finer details of the uh, high voltage electronics in the battery, we observed that many uh, iterative improvements happened. Um, things like eliminating fasteners, removing excess tape, simplifying covers, reducing the amount of potting materials, eliminating basically more than half of the uh, 
of the temp sensors, depopulating some of the boards where it didn't need to have the redundancy. These changes might seem trivial to the casual observer, but they are an indicative of a, of a mentality in an engineering culture that's serious about reducing costs wherever possible. They still maintained all of the functionality, however. The deal with Tesla is that they're serious about it, about everything that, uh, that they, they try and do, and we applaud these continued efforts by Tesla. We do want to point out that it's highly likely, though, that many of these changes are probably present on the current day Model 3 as compared to the one we tore down in 2018. Many of the, uh, of the uh, OEMs are pursuing these types of efforts, uh, but we're glad to see that uh, Tesla was definitely no exception. They've been doing a great job. Okay, my hand right here is the uh, Tesla Model 3 headliner. Normally I'm not terribly impressed with headliners because for the most part they're always the same. This one being no, uh, no exception. It has uh, glass fiber and it's uh, compression molded. And we, we look at this as being the normal way of, of getting the job done. Let's talk a little bit about what we got in the Model Y. Um, one of the most streaking features of the Model Y is its full panoramic glass roof with no body cross members but this is uh, uh, this more obvious feature coupled with a pretty unique headliner solution um, that was basically unlike anything we'd ever seen they opted to utilize injection molded plastic construction rather than conventional thermoset cardboard or fiber construction like what was on the three they realized some major benefits in terms of improved manufacturability they eliminated the sloppy, time-consuming gluing process. They eliminated numerous fasteners. And they made the assembly that's uh, going to be much easier for the technicians to install without having to worry about creasing or folding the substrate. They also made the entire assembly a two-piece component, which will involve some massive and expensive molding tools, but which is probably justified considering it affects 100% of their volume and offers the aforementioned savings in time and assembly. Not only that, it looks nice. Well, you may have noticed that we're a little uh, brighter here, but that's because we're in one of the photo booths. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about commonization. And the first thing that, uh, or one of the most striking things that's common is the, uh, the seat assemblies. We talked about this uh, before, but uh, it basically exemplifies everything that Tesla has to say about or everything that has to be said about Tesla and commonization. Um, Tesla was vocal about their intention to keep as much of the Model Y components common with the three, and we observed some serious commitment to this. We saw in the interior with components like the IP, the console, and like I just said, the seat. We saw this in the uh, high voltage electrical, electrified components like the motor and the battery. Now, Tesla initially said that they were sharing as much as 75% of its components with a Model 3. That would be quite an achievement. Um, Volkswagen has long been the front runner in terms of their commitment to savings through commonization or commonality. Kia and Hyundai and Toyota uh, also share that same mindset. But even for them, 75% would be an incredible, uh, an incredible number to hit, to share, I should say, between a sedan and an SUV. At the end of the day, while we did see a lot of common components, we're not sure whether Tesla actually hit 75% um, in, in terms of literal parts, but maybe uh, we believe that it might have been achieved uh, with respect to the cost of their components. Um, since the Model Y shared some of its costlier components with the, uh, the three, it may be able that uh, we able to keep about three quarters of the common cost sharing with a small percentage of actually uncommon parts. So we're on the next uh, um, thing that we think is an improvement. So let's start off with looking at the Model 3 um, induction motor. This is the coppers that used to be inside of the Model 3 motor. And you can see that you don't have to be a genius to know that this is gonna be kind of expensive. 
So even though the front induction motor featured the same external housing and geometry that we saw in the Model 3, uh, we realized that once we got a look at the rotor, that they'd made some changes inside. Tesla substituted the vacuum brazed copper rotor that I just showed you for a cast in place aluminum assembly. This reduced cost while maintaining the functionality and critically maintained the same envelope, which is uh, basically re-enabling the use of the surrounding components. They also managed to eliminate the lock nut that retains the rotor laminates in favor of staking operation. So what we believe happened is they ran down the lock nut to lock everything in place, and then what they did was they stamped them, uh, staked them, I should say, to make sure that they didn't have, uh, they didn't have that, uh, that lock nut running around because reducing weight and cost basically improves the efficiency. Any time that you can take anything that's rotating, uh, any, any weight that's rotating, it, it's basically going to improve your efficiency. It was good to see that there was a relatively uh, significant change in the rotor design that didn't prompt them to do a complete tear up of the front, um, the front motor. Okay, so this is uh, the ADAS board and uh, this is from the Model 3. Now, I, I don't have the one from the Model Y because I've got two electrical engineers looking at this thing trying to um, figure it out. This is what I would classify as my major takeaway. This board here is for um, auto autopilot. Um, this would be rated at about two and a half. The other one is rated as a three. And if you think this is densely populated, and if you think these ICs are, are pretty snappy, the, uh, the NVIDIA chips, remember that Tesla has decided to invent their own chip. And that has given our guys fits trying to figure out how this thing works and how they're going to take it apart and how we decap and how we x-ray and on and on and on. So it's going to take us a while before we can show you the ADAS board from the Model Y. But the Model 3 was dramatic and still is. But when we get to the Model Y or when we took the Model Y to pieces, um, we were totally blown away. We're going to probably have to wait for a while before my guys can get that done. But this, this is my major takeaway. Everything electronic for Tesla is, is absolutely stunning. Well, boys and girls, normally I don't, um, I don't read from a script. Um, I'm not usually good at it, but in this case, the information that I'm going to tell you or talk about is kind of important. And so I want to make sure that I don't flub anything, and I want to make sure that you know that this is sincere and we've put some thought into it. So now that the Model Y teardown is drawing to a, a close, you're probably wondering what's next. There was a time when my answer would have been, well, we're going to go back to business as normal. But instead, on the heels of what's been a, a huge vote of confidence and encouragement from all you viewers, we've decided to carry the momentum forward and we're going to create new content. Um, you've all said that and uh, um, we're, we're very humbled and honored that, uh, that you think what we're doing is, uh, is worthwhile. Hopefully uh, you'll like what we're going to do next. We'd like to thank all of our viewers for constructive feedback along, with the, way, along the way. And that was a huge benefit, um, helping us to refine and improve our videos. And moving forward, um, we're hoping that you're going to continue to uh, help keep us on our toes and suggest areas where we can get better. So first off, at a high level, what are our plans? We're going to continue to create videos where we tear down products and discuss the manufacturing and design insights that, um, that, that lie beneath the, the skin. Looking at a product all by itself really doesn't tell you much. We anticipate more full feature vehicle teardowns in comparison similar to what we did for the Model Y, but we also intend to expand into other industries that we've worked on such as electronics, appliances, aerospace, energy, whatever. We, we get a chance to look at almost everything. So we think that it might be might be entertaining for some of you to see what's inside your, uh, <laughs> your washing machine or something. We'll be taking into account many of the suggestions that uh, you, the viewers, have already shared, and we're going to balance those what we feel is industrially re relevant. 
the exciting new things that are sitting out there, everyday kind of co uh, components and, uh, and products. We're going to buy them ourselves, we're going to analyze them and share them with you. Our ultimate goal will be to continue to drive interest in taking a closer look at the products that we use each day, understanding and highlight the whys behind the whats. What's it do? How does it do it? Why do they do it that way? In the short term, um, as uh, there's probably many curious people out there, what's immediately next? What's immediately going to happen next week? After much deliberation, and I want to say that sincerely, um, we've arrived at a course of action that we're very excited about. We know that a lot of people, a lot of people are excited about the Cybertruck, and that's me included. Actually, not just me, it's everybody at Monroe included. But since that won't be available for quite some time, we thought we'd be a little proactive and do what we call competitive benchmarking to a set baseline for the Cybertruck ahead of time. As I've mentioned before, I don't think there is a product in the marketplace right now that is like the Cybertruck. However, uh, we're going to do our best to try and benchmark what everybody else says is, uh, is a Cybertruck uh, competitor. We handpick a group of three relative competitors. Starting next week, we're going to be uh, sharing episodes every other day where we focus on a particular area of the vehicle, talk about the similarities and the differences, what we like, what we don't like, and how insightful uh, some of these uh, new things might be uh, with relevance and respect to the, uh, to the Cybertruck. We're excited about uh, the content to come, and although I'm not a Mr. Excitement, I can tell you inside I'm just seething. <clears throat> we hope you'll join us again, and we extremely appreciate all the support and comments that you've shared with us thus far. The growing uh, of this channel has been a huge moral booster during a very tough time for us, and that's the truth. Uh, we're all looking forward to what uh, the future can hold in store for us. So ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you so much. Keep tipping those cashiers. The bad times are not over yet. And stay tuned for more to come. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.